Hey guys, it's Amanda here from Stage 32, and I'm super excited to have for you today with our Instagram Live, a very special guest, a very good friend of mine, Brian Dobbins. Um, for those of you guys who don't know Brian, he is the co-president of Artist First. Um, he's a manager and a producer. Um, he has produced shows like Mixed Dish, Black Dish, uh, Grown Ish, Elemental Ish. You got all the issues in your, your repertoire. And um, he, he definitely manages some really great talent like Martin Lawrence. Um, and what we are super excited is that Brian is a mentor in Stage 32's Diversity Springboard, and he's going to be meeting with our grand prize winner um, of the competition. So uh, I've got Brian here for a few minutes, and I just wanted to, uh, you know, let you guys get a chance to meet him and, and ask him some questions. So welcome, Brian. Thank you for having me. How's everybody doing? Or how are you doing? Definitely very good. <laughs> no, very good, very good, yeah. very good. Um, um, so Brian, one of the things, you know, you, you're, you obviously have your hands in a ton of different things. You're both on the producing side as well as the management side. You know, one thing that I'd love to get an idea of is, um, and I know two, I know that no two days are the same, but what does a typical day look like for you? Um, well, yeah, I mean, look, I, my days are spent talking to clients um, and oftentimes dealing with a lot of problems, you know, uh, that come with uh, the projects that they're a part of, the ambition that they have, the um, projects that they're finishing. Um, you know, that that's a lot of <laughs> what I do. I'm often a fireman, you know, uh, dealing with, um, you know, uh, the kinds of complications that come with, you know, relationships, communication, uh, and, um, you know, uh, complicated deal structures or understanding of uh, their understanding of the way things should work. And artists are, you know, often busy being artists working on what they're doing, their craft, they're on a set performing, they're uh, in their lab, whatever that looks like, writing. Um, and so my job is to allow them to focus and prioritize on their craft. Um, you know, and so <laughs> there's a lot of days where the phone, you know, almost every day the phone just, you know, as soon as the the business starts up it just rings and the phone rings and rings 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 all day and the emails come in and texts come in and i'm just i'm you know i'm battered with uh all of the needs and wants and i have to kind of balance out the what, what's a priority and sometimes in a day things that start out as a priority i mean most businesses are like this you know um, or most people find this happens if i find this happen uh, that this occurs is that you start out in one place thinking your day is going one way and then, you know, something else hits. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm, and, and so you have to start an, uh, early enough where you're not playing defense most of the day. Definitely. Right? And the, it's like, it... no, I was going to say that the best days are uh, for me, you know, are when I'm on offense and I can be more architectural around a client's career and um, get a chance to really design some of the things that we've discussed or that they have in mind and or I know that uh, fits into their long-term plan or goals. Yeah, that's interesting. It's an interesting peek behind the curtain because I think, you know, you know, realize like you may have, your best laid plans for the morning might be today's the day I'm going to get that that one recipe, you know, look at that one recipe that I've always wanted to make. But then next thing you know, you have all the all of these different fires. And I think it's really interesting um, peek behind the curtain to see what a day is like for you, um, you know, to understand that, you know, not only do you have the business, but you have the clients, but you also have the development of, of the artistic pursuits of your clients. And so, you know, I think it's important for people who are looking, you know, for representation or looking to create a career in this business to understand that, you know, to be mindful of your time, you know, and to be mindful of someone who does produce and manages time. Now, Brian, I do have a question. So if you, um, 
you know, it's where do you find new material that you would want to, to pick up? Well, uh, I'll answer it in this way. I mean, in the early days, uh, I was uh, lucky to have uh, anybody to be a part of my roster, right? You know, like I was, uh, I was looking everywhere. You know, I would, you know, talk to friends. I would read anything that came my way. Uh, but moreover, you're you're finding clients that are in the bloodstream of or in the ecosystem of our business, meaning um, they are being considered to uh, come on board to write a script for someone, or they've been hired to write a script, or they've been hired to, uh, you know, uh, or, or in consideration to uh, direct a particular project. Um, that's as things started to, you know, happen for me. Um, because, you know, there's, there's a lot of talent out there. So it's hard to discern who you should be paying attention to. But like I said, in the early days, it's like, you know, I would find anyone that I could that I thought was talented. And, you know, I did okay. Um, you know, I learned a lot about what I needed to know and the qualities of uh, a good writer, a good actor, a good director. Um, one of the uh, most distinguishing qualities is someone that is really dedicated to their craft. Um, someone who will get up and do it uh, seven days a week and is not concerned about what they're being paid. Right. And I think, you know, everyone wants to make a living doing this, right. Everybody, you know, like as an artist, uh, you should be thinking about how you can generate income for yourself. Uh, you know, uh, that's not, that's not a sustainable life. Uh, but you also have to know that there's going to be times when you're not gonna be paid for what you're doing um, so that you can be paid later or so that um, you can set yourself up to, to leverage a larger payment down the line. Because what happens is, you know, like for instance, if you're a, a director, um, you know, even the best directors, they don't work every year, right? They, you know, they work for, uh, on a movie for a, you know, if you count pre-production and post, it's a, it's a little bit more than a year most times, right? And then, you know, you have your publicity to do after it if it's a big enough movie. Um, and then maybe they're searching for their next movie. So they might work uh, for 18 months and then be off for 18 months. And then next thing you know, they're, they're up in their next film. And once in a while, you'll if you're big enough to direct, you'll, you'll work back to back. You'll have projects lined up. But, you know, the, the point is, is that um, I look for people who are ambitious uh, about art, right? And, and, and want to tell stories and will tell stories when no one is looking, right? And, and they feel like they have to get those things out and they constantly want to improve. Because I'm not magic, you know, I'm not, I don't come into somebody's life and just because, and I have to remind people that this, you know, when I, when I talk about what I do and, and what I can add, you know, I'm sort of like a catalytic, catalytic converter, right? So if you're in momentum, I can help shape your, your ambition into something and help create a plan and put you in the right situations and help you make good decisions and, you know, be your guide, right? And your advocate. Um, but I'm not going to get you up in the morning. I'm not going to make you write. I'm not going to tell you that, hey, this didn't sell. So let's go write another script. So it, again, the number one thing is somebody that is hard charging and wants to be always improving. And, you know, uh, from, from there, uh, it, it, it really like, you know, I look for people who have a voice um, and that's, it's starting to become sort of a cliche thing to say, but, you know, some people will say, well, you know, I, I have I've artists that have approached me and said, you know, my brand, my brand. And I'm like, I don't think people really know what that means. You know, uh, I, as an artist, it's kind of weird to say you have a brand. It's more of a distinction, right? What makes you unique, right? What is, the thing that you do that no one else does, right? 
and that's that's a, that's a hard thing and you have to imagine what it's like on the executive side there's so many artists there's so many writers there's so many directors all vying for this really interesting opportunity and so how do you how do you figure out who's who right how do you and what you want is to, as a as a decision maker as a buyer to say well that person has a unique take or bring something special or or distinct to this situation that I'm, or to this project that I'm looking for. And sometimes it's, and, and that might not be for everyone, but you have to be, com- you have to be comfortable in that. So I'm looking 100%. for people who are really comfortable in their own skin, right? A hundred percent. It's, it's that passion. It's that perseverance and, you know, and it's, and it's, it's networking as well. You know, one of the things you started this off is that, you know, earlier on in your career, you were open to reading a lot, you know, consuming a lot, but then, um, you know, as it's moved forward, you know, it's a vetting process to be able to get material to you. And we talk about that a lot on stage 32, you know, and that's, you know, why we've created this community is to, um, you know, to really take the time to learn and respect the business, to make the relationships and to ultimately find your tribe. And you and I talked a little bit about that yesterday. So can you talk about the importance of networking and finding your tribe? Yeah, look, I, I think um, what you're doing at stage 32 is really vital, particularly and when you're not in um, what is considered the epi- epicenter of, uh, you know, the entertainment business. But it's kind of like, you know, Wall Street is the epicenter of the financial world uh, for most people. But, you know, you can still be a broker in Idaho, right? Um, and so I think that, you know, what your, your efforts in stage 32 are critical um, because, um, you know, what you and I discussed yesterday is like having a band or a tribe of people that you commune with and that you learn from and that you grow with and that you are um, looking to exchange ideas and put forward material and content with like it, it's we live in a great world today when it comes to like you know you know creating opportunities for people to see what you do when i started that was not a reality you didn't have youtube you didn't have instagram you didn't have you know all these tools to uh distribute what y- your material to the rest of the world and now it's a click away and so you know, what, I, what I've always encouraged people to do is don't worry about re- people like me, <laughs> you know, don't be so concerned about a, rep- a representative. Representatives find you, right? That's kind of the way it should work. Um, now, not in every case, but, you know, for the most part, like, you know, I, I, I'm asked this question over and over again. Well, how do I get how do I get a rep- representative? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, like, you, I show I show up when talented people are around, right? Like, I hear about it, right? I when 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 t- like we're we're sort of like bees, right? And so when the the talent starts to, you know, create this honey, the bees show up. That 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 just is the way it works. And so. You know, I, I guess there are talented people over the course of time who've never been discovered, you know, like really, really talented people who, you know, make incredible things. But I, I don't think it's I think that's the rare, rare, rare minority. Um, and, and at least in kind of North America, you know, I can't speak for, you know, what goes on in the rest of the world. But in, in, a, in a world like the world we live in, right, the world that we're kind of addressing right now, um, if you have done something unique and special, we live in a world now where people can actually see it and people will find it. Um, and you have, but you, you have to and, and you use the word persevere. You have to continue to push and it has to be something that you really want to do. And the thing is, don't accept your friends telling you it's good, right? <laughs> like, it's kind of like when I cook and my fiance is like, well, that's really good. I'm like, was it? Or like, <laughs> I don't think it was really that good. Like, let's like, if, if is it restaurant quality yet? Like, I'm gonna cook that another time, and let's let's make it a little better. So, like, be your own worst critic. Be critic. Be self aware enough to know, and and have a group of friends that are really that really challenge you, 
right? Don't be satisfied with good enough. And I think that, again, the importance of community and a tribe of people that are creating all the time is more important than feeling like you need to be here in LA, right? Or, you know, living uh, around the business. Work on your craft, hone your craft. There will always be time to live in LA. And as we see during a, a global pandemic, more and more people are deciding that they can work from anywhere and be anywhere. And our world is gonna be forever changed as a result. And, it, and it's to the benefit of people who live in other places who wanna be you know, in the entertainment sphere, who wanna be in film and television. Absolutely. And I know you have to go. Um, final quick question for you is um, a lot of times on the creative journey, uh, you a creative will hear no. And I want to uh, talk to you about that. You know, at this point in your career, do you still hear no's? And if so, how do you deal with them? Every day every day see I'm, I'm but i you know i mean i'm wired a little differently like no is like i, I uh i'm it, i sort of get up for no you know i wake up in the morning for no um it it you know i work with a little bit of an edge every day um because my job is to turn a no into a yes or to prove those people who did not believe in the thing that i was doing uh wrong and uh, I think everybody needs sort of that purpose, right? And what I am there for is, as I, I mentioned, advocacy for artists. And what I'm there for is looking at the people that I really believe in and thinking they have something special you need to offer and getting people to believe what I believe. And I'm just arrogant enough in that area of my life to do that. You know what I mean? Like I, I think that, um, and I don't, I, you know, I don't consider myself an arrogant person. I just, one of the reasons I'm, I do what I do is because I think that I have, my, I guess my superpower is like, I'm, you know, I'm able to spot that little glimmer, you know, in people or things that sometimes people, other people don't see. And a lot of times people don't even see it in themselves. And I try to draw that out and, you know, allow the world to see it. And, you know, executives don't know. They frankly don't know because uh, a lot of times the things that they don't, they believe in don't work. You know, if you look at the movies that are released that, you know, from major studios, it'll, it's like one out of 10 that we're like, well, that was a really, really incredible movie, <laughs> right? Completely. And I, we're, we're, we're talking about people who are really smart people who do, uh, this all day long and done this for years, what makes them the experts, right? We don't know. It's, it's all subjective. And so my job is to kind of question your subjectivity and tell you, you know what, you should look at this a little bit differently. So I get up for no, right? I wake up in the morning, I push through no's and like no is closer to yes to me, right? I'll find somebody that will, that will, um, get me to a yes and not in every case like i'm not naive enough to think I, i'm always right right but i want to be more right than i am wrong i love that i love yeah. that well i would love to keep you uh forever to i'm really really enjoying this i wish i had time for one more question but i know that you need to go um so brian um do you have any last minute advice for for creatives that are out there to uh um to get after their their creative dreams yeah, I, I listen. I as I said, I, I it, I'm, I'll echo what I said earlier, which is uh, I, I think that if you're uh, an artist, you um, should be um, creating art. You know, um, if you're particularly like if you're an actor, find a way to act. It's not good enough to just say, "Well, I'm in class," right? Commune. Use stage 32, um, uh, go to film schools, um, meet, meet you know, young, young aspiring directors and writers and make a film and then make another and then make another and then make another. I mean, 
you know, the countless amount of stories, uh, particularly like at, at a place like Sundance or Toronto or South by Southwest, where you see a collective of people that have come together um, to become the Beatles, right? They have, you know, they've known each other and they've sort of, it's been trial and error and they shot something and that didn't work. And, you know, they had an editor and that editor is not that, that good, but then they found another editor and, oh yeah. And then they had a sound mixer. And like, next thing you know, you've got a group of people who are become people that are really reliable and you've created your own, you know, your own uh, world of, of, of a collective of people who you trust. And so when we come knocking, right, when the, the outside world, the enterprising world of uh, Hollywood comes knocking, you've kind of, you've kind of got to, you, you have a lot figured out, right? Doesn't mean you don't want to play ball doesn't mean you want to open your borders to let people in but you know the people that you can trust and you can count on to help you deliver the thing that you that attracted them in the first place so i would spend a lot of time relationship building and getting to know and like honing your tastes on who are the great you know set designers who are the great writers who are the great directors right and getting to know those people and getting closer to those people um, so that you have an opportunity to be getting better each and every day. I love it. Well, Brian, thank you so much for your time today. Um, we'd love having you in the Stage 32 family. And um, we're excited too, you know, for, for our winner, um, you know, for, for Jeffrey Thompson, who it's interesting what you said about him. He, uh, he has, um, he's written like crazy. He's done improv classes. He's made short films and uh, he kept trying and trying and trying. And ultimately, you know, we're excited to, to have you meet with him and, you know, give him, give him some advice and uh, help him on his journey. So we really, Great. really appreciate you being a part of it. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me and I appreciate it. Of course, Brian. Great to see you and uh, and we will talk to you soon. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye, Brian.